Hey everybody, um, I haven't made a video for a while. Um, I thought maybe it would be cool this time to uh, make a video on how to make 3D graphics instead of 2D. So up till now we've only done 2D stuff. So in this video I'll try to do the simplest 3D um, shader that, uh, that I can think of. And then from there on in the next video and the video after that, we can maybe build something cool with that. So let's get started. So first of all, let me just go here and draw something. So if we want to make 3D, then we have to, inside of the shader, we have to have some sort of concept of a camera. And um, for that, let, let, let me just uh, draw the screen over here. So if, if this is a screen, and I'll, I kind of draw drew it in perspective a little bit, if this is the screen and like uh, like in with a with a 2d shader we're only cons uh, concerned about like the pixels on the screen right and um, and for that we had our UV coordinates that that would um, uh, indicate which pixel we're we're working with uh, but now what we want to do is we want to out of the screen we want to make um, we want to make some sort of camera object and for that uh, I'm, I'm going to make a point in, in 3D space that is that I'll call uh, my camera position. And then from there, we're going to shoot out rays that intersect the screen and shoot out into the virtual world. Um, so and we do that for every pixel. So right now I can't obviously do it for every pixel, but you get the idea. So, uh, so there's like lots and lots and lots of rays that shoot out, that intersect the screen somewhere, and they shoot out into the virtual world. Um, so yeah. Um, and then what we'll have is, uh, we can have any kind of object in the virtual world. So let me just draw, well, let me take a different color. We should draw a house here. There's a blue house in our, in our scene. And, um, <clears throat> and then we can have it that any, any ray that, that intersects the screen somewhere that also intersects the house, well, like that, that pixel over there at the intersection gets the color of the house, whatever that was, if it's a blue house or a green house. And then late, later on, we can even figure out, you know, well, what is the, what is the lighting of this, of this particular point of the house? Is it in the shade or is it in the, is it in the sun and so on and so forth. So, so in order to do this, uh, what, like what we need is to start with, we need a function that takes a UV coordinate as an input uh, and as an output and gives us a ray. And, and, and all these lines here is, are, are rays, right? And what a ray is, is just, it's a line in 3D, uh, but like or a normal line goes infinitely in this direction and in that direction, a ray just starts at one point and it goes only in one direction so in this case it starts at the camera position and then it goes shoots through the screen so a ray how do we define this well a ray has an origin origin and it has a direction direction and <clears throat> for that uh, usually I named them RO for or uh, for ray origin and RD for ray direction. Um, so what we need uh, is a function that takes a UV as an input and, gave, and gives an RO and an RD as an output. And both RO and RD are vector three, by the way, because they're in 3D space now. Now that we're talking about 3D graphics, like our points are also in 3D. Um, so let's go to shader toy. Now let's start implementing this. So let me put away my pen. So over here we have our UV coordinate. And the first thing, so over here, <coughs> our UV coordinate goes from 0 to 1. Um, but I want the origin in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to do minus 0.5. Um, and then I have to account for my aspect ratio because my uh, viewport is not square. So I'm going to do uv dot x times equals i resolution dot x divided by uh, i resolution 
Y. And if you don't know what I'm doing here, uh, please <coughs> check my first video. Um, maybe I'll put it in the description below and uh, I'll explain what like what this is really here. So, um, so now I have my UV coordinates centered at the origin. So now what I want to do is back three R O make my ray origin or my camera position in this case. So my camera position, I want it, uh, well, in the X, Y direction. So X meaning left, right, and Y meaning up, down. I just want it at zero comma zero. And then in the Z direction, so the Z direction is gonna be into the screen or out of the screen. I'm gonna, and out of the screen meaning negative, I'm gonna do it at, well, let's say minus 0.2. All right, so that minus two is, is just the same as this distance here that I'm gonna draw in green. Uh, it's the distance from my, from my camera to the center of the screen. So right now that's two units. And, and, and this thing is at Z equals minus two. All right, so let's go back here. So that's for our ray origin. Now for our ray uh, direction, uh, all we have to do is, and I'll go back here, is we have to uh, calculate a point, the point of intersection, let's call it I, and then we have to subtract our ray origin, right? So uh, let me just delete this here. Oh. Let me get rid of some stuff here. And then, this back and this is my ray origin uh, and so my ray direction is just the intersection point point i minus my ray origin so i minus ray origin so uh, because it's a vector it's a it's a it's a it's an arrow that goes from the ray origin to the intersection point and anytime you want a vector that goes from somewhere to somewhere else well, then you take the endpoint and you subtract the starting point, and that's how you get that vector. So, so let's go back to over here. So now I can say vec three R D equals, and now first I'm going to do my intersection point of the screen, which is just U V dot X comma U V dot Y comma uh, zero, because my screen is going to be at zero at Z equals zero. And then I have that. So now I have my UV as an input and my RO, RD, which is my ray as an output. <clears throat> so now the next thing that I need is I need some sort of test. So, so, so now I'm creating lots and lots of rays, but those rays, they need to be tested against something in my 3D world, right? Like over here, they would be tested against a house shape. Now house shape is a little bit more complicated. so. To start out with, we'll, we'll just do a test with a point in 3D space. Uh, and then we're going to test the distance to that point. So if I have a ray over here, and I have my point over here, then what I would want to know is the distance from the point to my ray or my line. Um, and then based on that, I can do a coloring. And, and that's how you can visualize a point in 3D space. And so now how do I calculate that, the distance? Well, I can take, if I take two points on my line, so my first point on my line would be my ray origin, right? Like over here. If, if I take an arbitrary line, well, they all start at RO. So RO is one point on the line. And another point on the line um, would be uh, my ray origin plus my ray direction, right? Because my ray direction, I just, uh, I just calculated that. That's my vector that goes from here to here. So, so RO would be one point. Another point would be RO plus RD. Okay. And now I have a vector here too, from here to here, which is RD, right? Similarly to how I said over here that rd is i minus ro well over here it's the same thing if you want a vector that goes from one point to another point then you just subtract the the, the first from the second so i get ro plus rd minus ro 
well that's rd so rd is a vector over here and now if i take this same vector and i move it over here to my point p uh, that's a bit of a shitty p hang on let me make a bit better p here to my point p so I, if I take that same RD vector and I move it over here, so now I have that RD vector over here, now I can make a parallelogram. Like if I take this point and that point, and this point and that point, and that makes a parallelogram. And um, now I watched um, some YouTube videos, uh, and that's how I know how to get the area of a parallelogram. Also, this is something that probably in high school I had years ago and the area of a parallelogram uh, you can get by by taking the cross product between this vector the rd vector and this vector which is the i'll call it the let's say the rop vector right the vector from ro to p so if i do rop cross oh hang on what do I do? Okay, ROP cross with RD. Uh, then I get a vector out of that. And if I take the length of this, so the length of the cross product between these two vectors, well, that's the area of the parallelogram. So the area of the parallelogram is over here, right? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the area is also the base of the parallelogram times and the base is, is just from here to here right from here to here times the height and the height is what we want because the height is the this is the height and the height is incidentally it's the distance from point p to the line okay so um, go back so it's also the base um, b times the height uh, and now in this formula like we know everything but the h and the h is what we want right so so we can just take this b and move it to the left and b by the way so b is just the length of this rd vector right so if i rewrite that so i do do this r o p cross with r d the length divided by the length of rd equals h okay so this is how i um, calculate the the distance from any point in 3d space to any line in 3d space all right so that's what we need so let's go back here and let's implement that so for that i'm going to make a function a separate function that over here and that's going to return a distance so which is a float so I'm dist line and it's going to take my ray origin and my <clears throat> ray direction uh, like three ray direction and and a, a point in 3d space and I'm going to return the distance that point is to the line and it's a distance to the line not to a ray uh, for array it's a little bit different uh, but for now we'll just leave it like this so I'm just going to return oh, not right run return and there is a function for cross product which is called cross which is great <clears throat> it's the cross product between um, uh, this RO, ROP right between ROP and ROP is just P minus RO so I'm going to do P minus RO and RD and then the length of that, the length, the length of that, and I'm going to divide that by the base of my parallelogram, which is the length of RD. Uh, and so that should give me the distance. So now let's put that in here. So I'm going to do float D equals dist line. R O comma R D comma some point P that I'm going to define right now, which is the 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 point that I want to make uh, calculate the distance to. So point P equals vec three. Let's put a point in the middle of the screen. So that's zero comma zero for x and y, right? 
for x and for y. I'm going to put it at 0, 0, which is right here. And I'm going to put it um, <clears throat> at a certain depth, which, um, well, my, my at, at a certain positive depth, right? Because this negative depth goes in front of the screen, positive depth goes behind the screen. So I'm going to do, let's say, 3. All right, now, <clears throat> uh, and now I have my distance there. So now up to now, we've not done anything here. So let's just get rid of all of this and let's just visualize this D value here. And I get a white screen. Why do I get a white screen? Ah, okay. Why is the R going? All right, so I like I made a little mistake here for for my for my RD for my ray distance. I need uh, to subtract obviously my ray origin because this is the intersection point right here. So if I if I do that, then I get I get this, and and this is exactly what we expect because uh, any rays that go very close to the point, they will be. The, uh, like the, the distance will be small, therefore the color will be dark. And any rays that are far from the point, the distance will be large, and therefore the color will be bright. Um, but let's make a disk out of this. So I do D smooth, uh, smooth step, uh, point one comma point zero nine comma D. And if you don't know what I'm doing here, you should really watch my very first video on how to create a circle, it explains the whole smooth step a lot better. Uh, and now I have a little dot in the middle and you might think, well, that's not very impressive. And maybe it isn't yet, but it is 3D because now if I pull it closer to the camera, you see it gets bigger. If I put it farther away, it gets smaller. And so now what I can do is, uh, let's make a little animation. So I'm gonna do float t equals i, uh, global time and then I'm gonna make it uh, spin in a in a circle but the circle is in the same plane as I'm looking at so uh, so I'm gonna do sin t equals or for x and for y I'm gonna do 2 plus cosine of t so let's see what that does all right so now I have a little dot that gets closer to the camera and gets farther away. I can even make it closer still. Um, that, I'm not sure if that, yeah, okay. So, so that in a nutshell is um, how to make, how to start with uh, 3D. This is the simplest 3D I could make. So in the next uh, video, we'll, we'll build on this. And um, yeah, so I hope to see you next time. Bye.